Module 3, Lesson 15. A chef buys a 10-pound bag of potatoes. She uses 4 and 2 thirds pounds to make french fries and 1 and 3 quarters pounds in a casserole. How much potatoes does she have left? Let's think about how it is that we are drawing this problem. What's the whole amount? Right, the 10 pound bag of potatoes. So let's draw a bar and label it. The whole is the 10 pounds. And then we can go ahead and divide our bar model by looking at the other information in the problem. We have 4 and 2 thirds pounds that she uses to make french fries. So out of this 10, almost half is used to make french fries. And that was 4 and 2 thirds pounds. Now 1 and 3 quarters pounds is used in a casserole. So we label this here. And I'll put a C there for casserole, and the amount is 1 and 3 quarters pounds. So we have now used the 10 pounds, and we've also used the 4 and 2 thirds pounds, and the 1 and 3 quarters pounds, and what's remaining in our bar model is the amount of potatoes that she would have left. That is what we are solving for. That is the amount left after she uses this certain amount. Let's write our focused answer. She has blank pounds of potatoes left. So this is a multi-step word problem. And I've drawn that picture to help me figure this out. The amount that I'm looking at right now would be the amount of potatoes that she uses in making the french fries and the casserole. And as you can see by that bar model and what it is that I've drawn, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and add those two amounts together. 4 and 2 thirds plus 1 and 3 fourths. Grouping the whole numbers, that's equal to 4 plus 1 plus 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. 4 plus 1 is 5 plus times 4, times 4, times 3, times 3, that's 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths, which equals 17 twelfths. Putting 17 twelfths back towards a mixed number, that would be 1 and 5 twelfths. So that's 5 plus 1 and 5 twelfths, which equals 6 and 5 twelfths. So this amount of potatoes that is being used is 6 and 5 twelfths. How do I figure out what that will be for the remaining amount? That's right, I still have to subtract it from 10. So as I continue that problem and I made myself some more room, I have to subtract the amount that I had figured out from 10. 10 minus 6 and 5 twelfths, that amount of potatoes that she used from the 10 pound bag. Decomposing the 5 twelfths, this problem can be written as 10 minus 6 minus the 5 twelfths. 10 minus 6 is 4 minus 5 twelfths could think of this as 3 plus 1 minus 5 twelfths, and 1 minus 5 twelfths is 7 twelfths. So this amount is 3 and 7 twelfths is the amount of potatoes that she has left. 
be careful right here, the 4 minus 5 twelfths. I have seen many people s suggest that that amount is still more than 4, which does not work. And if you see here, we have that 7 twelfths is the amount that is more than that 5 twelfths, and that whole number is one smaller as well. So that's 3 and 7 twelfths pounds of potatoes left. And as you see here, I am writing it within my answer. So I express that answer clearly. It is reasonable. Let's think this is 3 and 7 twelfths. We just looked at the whole numbers. Yeah, so that's 3 and 7 twelfths, which is about 3 and a half. 1 and 3 fourths is worth 2, which would be 5 and a half. And then here's another 4 and 2 thirds, which is about 5, which is, um, would be 10 and a half, which is still close to 10. So my answer does appear to be reasonable. John used 3 and 1 half kilograms of salt to melt the ice on the sidewalk. He then used another 3 and 3 fifths kilograms on the driveway. If he originally bought 10 kilograms of salt, how much does he have left? Please complete your work on a piece of scratch paper and bring that piece of scratch paper in. You may pause the video if you need to get paper. Let's start by drawing that bar model. That bar model, the whole amount, is the 10 kilograms of salt. Because that's the whole bag. So draw your bar model and label it. Here's 10 again, but this time this 10 is the 10 kilograms of salt that he originally bought. He uses some am amount to go ahead and it's three and a half for the sidewalk. We'll label it S. This is for the sidewalk, and he was three and a half. For the driveway, it's about the same amount. Three and three fifths is actually more than three and a half. He uses there. And then finally then, we have used all those numbers, the 10 for that full amount, the three and a half, and the three and three fifths. So what's remaining then is the amount that we are solving for. That means that we will combine the three and a half with the three and three fifths. This will be the amount of salt that he uses. So we have three and a half plus three and three fifths. And we're looking at that whole amount and we're subtracting the amount used. So we will go 10 minus that amount. So this is the expression that you will have to solve. Pause that video to complete the work. Again, expecting that you complete this work on a piece of scratch paper. Let's express our answer clearly so that we say he has blank kilograms of salt left. Did you add these correctly? Did you have three and five tenths plus three and six tenths to get like units? In combining those, did you go 10 
minus 6 and 11 tenths. Continuing that, we would have 10 minus 7 and 1 tenth. Breaking that apart, you get 10 minus 7 minus 1 tenth. 10 minus 7 minus 1 tenth equals 10 minus 7 is 3 minus a tenth. In other words, we're talking 1 tenth less than 3. 1 tenth less than 3 is 2 and 9 tenths. So there I've completed my work. Thinking if our answer is reasonable, 2 and 9 tenths is very close to 3. So this amount was close to 3. This amount here is already close to 3.5 because it is 3.5. And, and 3 and 3 fifths, as we had stated before, is also close to 3.5. So 3.5 plus 3.5 is 7, plus 3 is 10, that full amount there. So it looks like these two numbers then would have to be one-tenth away from each other. Our answer is reasonable.